Here is Justice Chandrachud redefining the concept of merit when asked if we will trade off excellence in order to produce equal outcomes. My simple answer is how do you balance upliftment and merit? Very simple. We just need to redefine merit. How do you define merit only in terms of test scores in the examination? How do you only define merit in terms of entrance tests? We disagree with Justice Chandrachud's presumption that Dalits and other minority groups are unable to succeed on meritocracy. Not to talk of how patronizing and insulting it is to think that they cannot succeed on a competitive playing field like the rest of us. We on the other hand believe that the Dalits and minorities of India are as good as anyone else who can succeed based on meritocracy if we provide the necessary access and support along the way. This is the kind of Dalit empowerment that India needs, I'm sure you'll agree. Moreover, China is ratcheting up its stance on meritocracy, wooing Chinese scholars abroad back to the homeland through its Thousand Talents plan. The objective field of mathematics is being relativized, post-modernized if you will, establishing nonsensical statements like 2 plus 2 does not and need not be equal to 4, which is the objective truth. It's neither Brahmin nor Dalit, but simply the objective truth. The United States is losing its dominant position of being in the cutting edge of science and technology thanks to wokeism. Chandrachud's attack on meritocracy will ruin India's position on a cutthroat global stage and in the open markets. Instead of glorifying work ethic, he wants us to glorify victimhood. Instead of envisioning a stronger India, he is trashing the whole concept of meritocracy and making a mockery out of it. We believe that rejecting meritocracy indeed leads to the failure of India. Ours is not a theoretical argument but a pragmatic one against it. If you do not champion in the qualities of success that meritocracy encompasses, then failure is inevitable. Justice Chandrachud, who by the way is waiting in the wings, slated to be the future Chief Justice of India, speaks about privilege and attacks merit as caste capital that needs dismantling because it produces unequal outcomes. It's an irony because Exhibit A of privilege are the Chandrachuds themselves. The Harvard-educated Dhananjay Chandrachud is the scion of India's longest-serving Chief Justice, Yashwant Chandrachud, and also the father of the Harvard and Stanford-educated Abhinav Chandrachud, who is a practicing advocate in the high courts. You get the picture. Would it be too much to ask the Honorable Justice to walk the talk by relinquishing the power and positions he has accrued through these forms of inherited caste capital before he harshly judges the rest of us or redefines merit for the rest of us. While we have criticized Harvard's attack on IITs claiming meritocracy to be a sham born out of Brahminical privilege, the war against meritocracy is even broader. Here is the NCERT outside expert on merit in an interview by Ashoka University. Because merit is deeply Brahminical. It's a Brahminical concept. And so when you oppose reservations or grounds of merit, you are upholding a certain caste structure. We could dismiss this statement as something irrelevant, but India's top Supreme Court Justice Chandrachud is applying critical race theory saying that the equal opportunity system and even the reservation quota for minorities is rigged because the privileged have converted caste capital into merit, which then produces unequal outcome. The Justice says he wants to give new meaning to objective truths like science, excellence and even examinations. When we think of the expression science, we tend to think about words like objectivity, merit, excellence, maybe even competitive examinations. What I want to do is unpack new meanings of old vocabularies. Excellence is normally understood in individual terms as a sign of individual merit, individual caliber, individual hard work. But by focusing on the individual, we often mark the historically acquired privilege that each of us shares. The privileges that accrue to so-called general categories are not limited to English medium schooling, access to coaching centers, but it also includes cultural and social capital that is inherited from their families. 
the goal of the justice is to carry on ajanta subramaniam's agenda of dismantling the iits and the iims as they stand because they are institutions that have excelled on the basis of merit the concept of meritocracy in science technology engineering and mathematics stem education is thus being declared abusive snakes in the ganga shows the disastrous consequences of these invasive ideologies given india's delicate equilibrium of diverse identities our book snakes in the ganga is a work that systematically critiques critical race theory and wokeism as it is applied in the indian context but it seems like the supreme court is turning woke with justice chandrachud using critical race theory to inform his judgments proponents of this theory the critical race theory do not wish to eliminate race because they acknowledge that it is and will always be a part of their lives chandrachud believes that merely treating everybody the same regardless of caste is not enough he then goes on to equate race with caste thus applying critical race theory on indian society he says castelessness is a privilege for the upper castes who have quickly transferred their caste privilege into other forms of capital like merit once it is acknowledged that race and racial discrimination exists it makes it possible for the years of damage to be counteracted by positively uplifting the discriminated races a similar analysis also holds true for india with respect to caste where castelessness is a privilege that only the upper caste can afford because their caste privilege has already translated into social political and economic capital and so begins justice chandrachud's attack on merit and hard work of the millions in india who sacrifice all they have for a chance at success a major policy issue at stake here is the difference between equity and equality equality means equal opportunities to all equity on the other hand means achieving equal outcomes by reallocating the level of resources required to achieve this here the supreme court justice is making a case for substantive equality which essentially means equality of outcome formal equality requires recognizing all persons as equals and substantive equality aims at equitable outcomes justice chandrachud blames it on institutional racism or in india's case institutional casteism that is woven into the very fabric of institutions like the iits he says structural bias embedded in the indian institutions like the iits is the cause for different outcome making no mention of the hard work inherent skills and other factors that clearly have a bearing on outcome the members of the marginalized communities can also be institutionally humiliated not merely by using the tool of law but also by establishments that further a conducive environment for discrimination and humiliation to be perpetuated the bottom line the new principle is based on identity politics each group identity based on race sex sexuality gender identity nationality and creed experiences life differently and their inequality of power needs to be compensated by giving them unequal rights treating every person as an individual irrespective of their differences and members of multiple groups would not be sufficient to gain personhood because it would be ignoring the lived reality for those for whom their membership in such groups is a crucial part of their identity the indian supreme court justice is dismayed at iit's unequal outcomes despite caste and gender reservations even as the base of the student body at the undergraduate level has become more diverse though diverse not enough questions have been raised time and again regarding the limited representation of gender diverse and marginalized communities he hopes to use critical race theory to solve such disparities in outcome in the book snakes in the ganga we give a rejoinder to marxist theories such as critical race theory and intersectionality the idea is to make newer and newer marginalized groups who will continue the activism 
with vigor and enthusiasm akin to what we see in the fresh converts to any new religion. Wearing the oppressor oppressed lens, one can go on defining any number of intersectional groups by mixing and matching identities, leading to a proliferation of identities considered to be marginal that need special treatment. The more the victimhood, the more special one gets treated. Thus, new made up identities in gender and sexuality crop up every day, resulting in people demanding special treatment as they consider themselves victims of systemic oppression, which is always blamed on patriarchy. Justice Dhananjay Chandrachud, who is well schooled in Marxist thought, considers intersectionality a useful tool. Intersectionality has thus become an important conceptual tool for all of us today where numerous individuals are marginalized to different degrees due to their varying group identities. Therefore, any solution to this issue has to be one which does not force these individuals to choose between these multiple identities. This shift has opened the floodgates of identity politics because more victim identities emerge. Academic fields now include critical grievance studies, critical gender studies, critical sexual studies, critical fact studies, and critical caste studies. Chandrachud's commitment to intersectionality is so deep that he wants newer and newer rights to keep up with newer and newer groups of oppressed. It is important for our rights to constantly keep evolving to address new forms of marginalization that these groups have to face. It seems that the end game for creating more and more oppressed identity groups is to systematically hand over resources and power to those who wish to dismantle society as it stands today, which means the destruction of family, culture and institutions in a given society. Namaste. We have already explained how our book Snakes in the Ganga exposes the problems with American liberal arts being imported into India. Now we want to show that this importing has taken over even the Supreme Court of India. Harvard, as you know by now, is what we characterize as the nest of the snakes. We have also said that it is Harvard that is producing this and exporting it. And this just as happens to be a Harvard product. We will show you in his own words that he is parroting exactly the things we've said coming out of Harvard. Feminist scholar Kimberly Crenshaw introduced the concept of intersectionality. Chapter 1 of our book explains the theory of intersectionality and Crenshaw's work that Chandrachod mentions. Another favorite guiding principle of this justice is critical race theory. In the context of race, the answer to this question can be founded within the text of the critical race theory. We critique why critical race theory has no place in the Indian context throughout the book. Let's watch another clip on the justices reading list. Suraj Yengde, a prolific writer, has written in his book Caste Matters and I'll quote him. Suraj Yengde is Harvard's Dalit poster boy. While we oppose all forms of discrimination and even agree with some of Yengde's assessment on the ground realities of the Dalits, we reject his vicious attacks on Brahmins, Hinduism and everything related to the Indian civilization. Yengde's work is discussed at length in Chapter 5. Let's now take a look at another voice guiding the justice. In a seminal book which is titled The Caste of Merit, Engineering Education in India by Ajanta Subramaniam. Chapter 4 of our book is dedicated to critiquing the caste of merit by Ajanta Subramaniam. We recommend that the Harvard trained justice read our book Snakes in the Ganga, which gives a rejoinder to the scholarship of the authors he admires so he can be well informed as he makes his judgments that affect the millions of innocent, hard-working people of the nation. 